Hello and welcome to JHEP and World of Ed's lesson on carbohydrates. Um, first thing about carbohydrates is that we find them um, in most foods. They are the ones which give us this quick release of energy. Um, they're much better than, well, uh, the energy used in proteins and fats just because it's very quick to actually convert to glucose and so on and so forth. There are two types of carbohydrates and they're made from sugar units as well. There's simple and there's complex um, carbohydrates. And the type, of the type of simple carbohydrates is sugars, or are sugars. Um, that obviously can include glucose, fructose and sucrose. We're going to get into that um, in a minute. And the complex ones are the starches and the cellulose. And those, um, cellulose is a polysaccharide um, as well. So, first of all, we're going to go and stick with the sugars first. We can find sugars in lots and lots of foods such as fruit juices as well as um, Maltesers and other branded sweets and chocolates. So the first thing you need to know is that one sugar unit is called a monosaccharide. Um, the sugars, as we were talking about, the three types of sugars is called, well, glucose, fructose, FR, sorry, C-T-O-S-E, and sucrose. Glucose is, is the main form of energy used um, by our bodies and they, when they're oxidized, if you do chemistry, um, when they're oxidized, they release a lot of energy, okay? They release energy very quickly, so they're used by our bodies. Fructose um, is used to attract insects um, to, the, to the petals so that pollination and um, all these plant processes processes can go along and um, sucrose is used for sweeteners if you don't want um, if you don't want glucose if you don't want sugars or anything we can use sucrose instead so this is what a sugar unit actually looks like we've got this hexagon skeleton as I call it I'm going to fill it out and talk you through it so the first thing is that we have the oxygen on the first um, let's say the top right, okay, because we start the carbons from um, the middle, should we say, okay, we start counting the carbons from the middle, so we've got the first carbon, the second carbon, the third carbon, the fourth carbon, the fifth carbon, and the sixth carbon, I know it seems a bit, um, a bit confusing, but the carbons are not in a hexagonal shape okay sometimes um, one good reason is that it's easier to bind with other um, with other monosaccharides as well or bind with other molecules so the reason why I counted it is because when we actually join them when we actually see what happens to two monosaccharides you um, you need to note down what uh, what the bonds are. So we've got hydrogen here and OH here. We've got OH here, hydrogen here, hydrogen on the opposite side, OH on the opposite side, H, OH. This is very important, and you'll see in a minute. And this is CH2OH. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to draw out the CHHOH. And we got um got a H here as well. Okay, so this is what an alpha glucose looks like. Alpha glucose. Because there are two types of glucose, there are two types of these sugar units. There's the alpha and there's the beta. The difference between the alpha and the beta is that this, these two um, 
and these two parts are different. This one will be swapped over in beta because, because as you can see, the um, the hydrogens on the same is at the top of carbon and the OH at the bottom of carbon. So if we draw it out, C O C C C C, we have a H here, we have an OH here, we have a H here, and we have an OH here. As you can see, the OH is not on the same, it's not above the C over here, and the H is not above the, um, the carbon over here. So this is what we call beta glucose, and when we've got lots of beta glucose um, joining together through condensation, this is, it makes A, it makes cellulose, and B, it's very hard to digest, it's very hard to separate it, to catalyze it, or to use hydrolysis for it. Um, as you'll see in a minute. So this is what, um, these are all two alpha, um, alpha glucose and when they join together this OH and H just by itself forms together to make H2O. Okay, now you can understand why, um, what's it, we don't have, uh, we don't have an O here. It's to make water. Okay, and this is called a condensation reaction. Um, one way of remembering it is that when you've got uh, when you've got the kettle boiling and it's a very cold day, you'll see water vapor on the uh, on the windscreen. That's one way of remembering it. Water condensation. The opposite of it is hydrolysis, but we'll come to that in a minute. So the OH from the um, from the fourth carbon over here has joined to the H in this. Um, in, on the first carbon over here. So, they join together with a glycosidic bond to form, oops, wow. They join together like so. Okay, so they share an oxygen molecule. Um, they, uh, an oxygen atom, beg your pardon. Okay, so this bond over here is called a glycosidic bond. Um, as you can see, glycogen, well, not glycogen, glucose, sorry. Um, this is one way of remembering it. Glycosidic glucose, okay, monosaccharides. And this is called a disaccharide because di, in this case, means two. So two, um, two sugar units make a um, disaccharide. This is um, this is what's it? This is the formation of maltose, by the way. So glucose and glucose makes maltose, M A L T O S E, maltose, and that is a disaccharide. So to um, to recap on that, uh, I forgot to say hydrolysis as well is the process of removing um, or separating. The two, um, the two sugar molecule, um, the two sugar units using water. If you remember, you can have a look at um, electrolysis or um, just lysis when in the what's it in the red blood cell when the red blood cell goes through the process of lysis or plasmolysis. It means the separation using something. And what would happen, um, I should have stressed, is that um, the H2O just basically, um, one of the H's bonds with the oxygen and the OH is bonds with that carbon over here, forming two separate monosaccharides. Um, oh, and uh, maltase will be the enzyme which would hydrolyze, the, um, hydrolyze this. Um, polysaccharides are many, 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 well, just three or more um, sugar units, three or more monosaccharides. So, for example, over here, we've got amylose, but amylose is usually found in its thousands, and it's usually in a kind of tubular form. It forms like this, um, it forms like a straw, and it has this, it's got a space in which, um, well, but it's just got, it's just a straw shape. 
and it's found in starch, as I've said. Cellulose is the um, is also a polysaccharide, and it's a beta glucose, two beta glucoses, um, forming one four glycosidic bonds. That's what I forgot to write. This is an alpha. Um, this is a one four glycosidic bond. Okay, because it's formed on the first one and the fourth one. I nearly forgot to say that. One four gly. Cocytic bond. And um, cellulose is actually in a linear type of way. It actually forms straight lines as opposed to, well, it'll be close together as opposed to a straw type thing. I can't draw it because it's, it's in 3D and yeah. So it's in a linear form of way because it actually um, it actually forms hydrogen bonds with um, its neighbours to form these fibrils, and these fibrils will make these fibres. You might remember this from chapter one or OCR unit one, module one. And um, very few animals, like I said, can actually break these bonds. Uh, and also, um, last but not least, cellulose can form one six glycosidic bonds as well as one four glycosidic bonds so that is it for um carbohydrates